Uh, so, so this is the second presentation in the uh, row. Uh, so uh, today we are very happy to have uh, Yiran Chen, my good uh, friend and colleague, uh, as the distinguished speaker to talk about the EDA researcher's journey into AI. He's a very well accomplished and well-known uh, researcher in our community, so he doesn't need to have a introduction, but just in case, uh, I give you a very brief introduction uh, and uh, bio from him. So he received uh, his bachelor and master degree from Tsinghua University and PhD from Purdue University. He has spent some time in the industry and then came back to academia in um, 2010. Uh, so he worked at the um, uh, University of Pittsburgh. He got tenure there, then he moved to uh, Duke University, where he is a, a full professor and um, uh, serves as the director of the NSF Industry University Cooperative Research Center for Alternative Sustainable and Integrated Intelligent Computing and the co-director of Duke Center for Computational Evolutionary Intelligence. And uh, his research work is on new memory and storage system, machine learning and neuromorphic computing and mobile computing system. So he has published several papers. Um, he has close to 100 US patents. Uh, he has been on the editorial board of uh, many uh, journals in our community. He was, uh, he's on the uh, organizing and program committee of several uh, conferences uh, in the field. Uh, he's currently the editor-in-chief of the IEEE Circuit and Systems magazine. He has lots of best paper awards um, and uh, nominations. And he is uh, he received a NSF Career Award, a ACM SIGDA Outstanding New Faculty Award. Uh, and uh, he's listed in the HPCA Hall of Fame. He's a fellow of I ACM and IEEE. So with no further ado, I leave the floor to Giron for his talk. So just um, to uh, give you um, how it runs today. So please put your uh, questions in the Q&A. So Yiran will take your questions uh, at the end of the, uh, his presentation. So uh, when the presentation is over, I mean, in the meanwhile, you can basically put your questions. Uh, I would read uh, the questions to him at the end. And towards the end, you can also raise your hand and uh, basically ask the question. Just, um, so that's it. So okay. the floor is yours. The virtual floor is yours. Okay, Maddie, thank you so much for the introduction. Uh, yeah, and also uh, I'm honored to be here to give this talk. Um, so I think about the topic, I feel like I give too many talks regarding like machine learning acceleration, you know, emerging memory, neural computing. So <clears throat> I think there will be the opportunity for me to solve the, what I have done in pretty much in the last uh, 10 years, you know, in this uh, exciting field and uh, to uh, think about, you know, what will be the uh, path for me to gradually develop the, you know, to the current uh, status of my research. So I choose the title, which is uh, an, an EDA researcher's you know, journey into the AI, um, because, you know, many people know I'm working on the new morphic computing, machine learning. I want to show why um, I'm not here. So. Um, oh, let me see the page. Okay, the title of, of my research can be many. So I asked my students, you know, to create this uh, uh, work cloud that basically show emerging memory, mem register, spintronic, neuromorphic computing. And some people also know the neural network, you know, uh, embedded system, mobile or security. And there are many, many types. Um, um, but if I look at, you know, my uh, education, you know, from undergraduate and also master uh, uh, degree, actually my master thesis is nothing about circuit design. It's nothing about the EDA. It's, uh, it's because I was working on the optical communication, particularly if I look at my master thesis, it's basically research on, you know, the EDIFA, the so urban the fiber amplifier. So for people who have no idea about this, basically when you transfer the optical signal, the signal will decay and you have to have amplifier to boost the signal and then transform it then again. So my uh, otherwise uh, Professor Chong Chen Fan, you know, he 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 was the first first OSA fellow from mainland China, and delivered the first plenary talk, you know, in the OIF 
FC, which is uh, equivalently the uh, flagship conference in the optical fiber communication. So that was my master. But when I applied for the PA PhD, uh, I couldn't get offer from Purdue uh, relevant to the op optical. So I uh, asked for uh, microelectronics and I was, um, um, oops, there's some, yeah. Uh, so there, so, um, so, um, um, so it's, uh, so I, I was admitted by, you know, Kaushi and the, uh, Chinko at that time, you know, about 2000, uh, 2001. And the first paper I published is actually, uh, about the model reduction. So for, um, people, uh, had impression about the, the hot topic back to, uh, 20 years ago, um, people, uh, you know, uh, the model reduction was a very hot topic. So basic idea is you have the, L, the RLC circuit and you're trying to approximate this RLC model by using some other smaller mo models. And there are many ways you know, to approximate, approximate this because you need to take care of the uh, temporal or the frequency domain raise point. And the way to do it is you are going to generate some uh, top, um, orthogonal top, uh, polynomial, which is, you know, serve as the basis of this ma model. And then you decouple the original model to the series of the, this uh, ba ba basis, and then you approximate them. So this paper was published in the day 2002. That was my first paper published I, I produced. So, um, so my training was actually purely modeling the mathematics of all, all this. But my research thesis is actually uh, nothing about AI. At that time, you know, nobody working on AI. AI is actually a very um, minority topic. You know, you couldn't find a job even. So. Uh, my research is about, you know, the power efficiency and robustness, you know, for the EDA, uh, like, you know, power supply noise reduction, liquid power measurement, low power design. And interestingly, because I changed my uh, topic uh, during my PhD study, so my first author, uh, first the first author paper I, I produced was not even included in this uh, say, uh, say, thesis. So that was my PhD thesis. You can see even you know, when I graduated, I have, a, I have never touched a, a, a AI neural network or something. So oh, by the way, so I intentionally pick, you know, the pick, pick, pick pictures of a culture and the Shinko like this, because those are the, the faces in my uh, impression at, at that time. And actually, you know, they are, look at this now. So this is the latest uh, four photos. Um, so <clears throat> I was, you know, lucky to work with, you know, uh, under supervision of uh, Chinko and, and Kaushik, and then I I I joined uh, uh, Inda uh, straight after my PhD. I spent two years with Synopsis and then joined Seagate working on the emerging memory technology. Um, so um, I, I and people start to know my research pretty much about that time. Uh, we created the first, first ITT run cell uh, model, which received the best award from SQD. And we tape out the first ICT run uh, trip in the United, in the, in the United uh, States, uh, which received best award in SRP, uh, SRPD. And also with this initial work you know, about scalability of uh, uh, the metal oxide device. So later on, people know that could be the resistive uh, uh, memory or the memory device. So those are my research you know, at Seagate uh, because Seagate at that time trying to do research regarding you know emerging memory to replace the hard disk drive. So um, also at that time, you know, um, uh, HP published one paper talk about you know the link between this uh, metal oxide device and something called the mount raster. Basically, people believe that could be the force you know element device of, uh, for the circuit. And uh, all, at that time, we realized we can also implement the similar properties by using the Spintronic device. That's why in 2009, you know, I worked with my uh, colleague, you know, Xiaoping Wang, uh, published one paper on the EDL regarding the Spintronic mount Razor device. Interestingly, um, only about um, a week, you know, after the paper was published, 
uh, actually spectrum they call us and want to have an interview. Uh, because uh, it, my razor ray device was uh, uh, receiving a lot of attention at that time. People want to know, besides the model up, upside device, you know, Spintronic could be the second one, you know, to implement this. So that, that eventually they published one uh, ray, uh, in interview on the actually spectrum to about Spintronic and my razor. And, uh, you know, they, we talk about uh, the, the, the future of uh, this. Uh, uh, of this uh, um, this uh, um, uh, spectronic uh, 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 device. Okay, um, so um, I try to use a later pointer to show you. I don't know where I can find it. Um, okay, I think I couldn't couldn't find. It. Okay, that's fine. Um, so. Oops. Okay. Um, so, but at, at that time, we start to know that so the MAM raster device has something we call the synaptical uh, property, which is, you know, the property can represent some synaptical behavior in the biological neural network. Um, for example, back to this, you know, we have, this would be two terminal devices connected maybe two neural neurons. It can transfer a signal from one end to another end. And there's a non volatile, which means after you're programming this device, you know, the device can actually memorize the synaptical words on this device. And so starting from there, you know, after I joined academia in 2010, we start to work on this, so we call it the memorative synapse. So the basic idea is we're trying to use the MAP raster device to implement the synapse and trying to link all of them, you know, to create a neural network. So this is one paper published in 2012. So, and at that time, we, um, we talk about there is a one way we can integrate the CMOS circuit with this MAP raster device to create a synapse and also the neural, uh, neurons. And then we can connect this uh, individual synapse together to eventually build up the neural network. This way I'm going to show uh, we can build up the 12 neurons network, you know, to, to uh, classify the nine uh, uh, numbers we show here. And you can see that, you know, when you create an array to represent the neural network, and it's based, basically to implement a matrix of vector multiplication. And if we, if if you have background about uh, the semiconductor dark, dark, dark circuit design, you you may realize this will not be the scalable approach because following the increase of this uh, dimension of the matrix, and the routing ability will become you know more se severe. So eventually, you know, we have very small area uh, a, a will be occupied by this uh, neurons and synapse, but the majority of this a area will be you know occupied by the by the routing wires. So that that's the one example sheet. So it looks like it's not going to be very promising ideas to just implement you know implementing the neural network by using the individual synapse. But also about you know 2011 2012 you know the uh, HP they actually uh, describe a 21 pi, pi 21 crossbar uh, structure as the visual here. And this is not for, for the, the for what we call the neuromorphic computing or the machine learning acceleration. The basic, basically, they use this uh, structure to deliver the high density um, memory uh, structure and then talk about there's a way they can individually select you know, one of these um, devices and just read and write this uh, device. But when we look at this paper, we immediately realize that this basically is a MIMO says and multi input and multi output. And we can map topologically the, the neural network width, which is a matrix on this crossbar uh, structure. So um, I believe we're the first one to talk about this idea at that time. That's about 2011 or late 2010. So we talk about how we're able to map this uh, matrix down to this uh, crossbar by uh, and representing uh, the neural network with using the conductance of this uh, memory sort of device. This was a joint work, you know, between uh, Air for RRL and also at the, at the, at the, at the, our groups. And um, this can reduce the computational cost from the O n squared down to O one because 
so we can simultaneously perform n square when we the, the input the main, main, main mention uh, my, my, my multiplications you know to, uh, uh, simultaneously and so um, we published the, fir the first pay paper in 2012 in DAC and SCN uh, to talk about the training or so the inference of this uh, this work this is pretty much the starting point for us to um, migrate the, the emerging memory research you know to this uh, neuromorphic computing or later on people also call the machine learning acceleration on this uh, 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 this uh, circuit and the first example we represented a way uh, we, uh, we uh, present is so called a brain state in a box. It's basically it's a mutant of a uh, half your network. So you have the input. The input basically is represented as a uh, uh, voltage. You can also talk about the, uh, the, the current of the same. Uh, inject into this um, uh, non risker crossbar, and you may have the two crossbars because one will represent the positive weight, one will represent the negative weight. And then you collect all the output, you know, current. That will be the sum of, um, you know, the product between the input of voltage and also the conductance of this uh, memory store device. And then you're trying to compare this one with, you know, some. Um, how you calculate the output, you know, at the uh, output voltage by using some uh, the signal circuit, and then you compare with, you know, some memorized pi patterns. If the pattern match, you then will know you basically successfully classify some patterns. But if not, you will resend this input back to the uh, the output back to the input and redo the iteration. And the BSP basically is an iterative competition. So eventually, they will converge to some patterns. That that means that you will classify the input to some um, to 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 some patterns they might. Uh, um, 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 memorized and they could be they could fail basically they wrongly you know classify this but they will always give you one uh, answer and you can program this um, memory store crawl crossbar by using uh, at that time called the delta rule so you you adjust the input you monitor the output you'll see the discrepancy between what you receive and what you target and then you'll change the input uh, but now we know this basic uh, simplified version of the backup propagation, but at that time it's basically only for one single layer. So we try to implement this on this uh, BSB circuit by using this non race device. This is like a very initial research. At that time, nobody even talked about like a deep learning or something first. Everything is still based on the uh, very you know, traditional neural, neural network. Okay, and, and you can see the result, right? So we can, you know, use the MNIST you know, to, to, to invalidate the, 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 you know, our system design. You can see the diagonal here, the basically show, you know, if the memorized pattern match the input, they will basically convert you know, much faster than any other patterns. You basically can classify them. And you will see the noise impact. So that basically, if you have input noise, they will generate some you know, arrows. And you can also send this one to like a face recognition or some you know dark cloud or something first. Well, that was about 2013 when we tried to do this. By that time, but now if you are doing uh, you know amnesty validation, you're not be accepted by that right, for sure. But that was you know the, the eight, eight or nine eight years ago is okay. Um, but but at that time, you know we also so find another issue, which means that we're not able to fabricate a very large array of this uh, man raster or the RN crossbars. There could be many issues, like a defect, you know, the variability of the device, and also error drop. Uh, so, in, in other words, we need to find out a way, you know, to sort this to call the scalability issue. And if you still remember, I had a training in my PhD, you know, back to 2001, 2002, about a model reduction. We're trying to approximate the large matrix with using the smaller main matrix, then that'd be a very natural way for me to solve this, right? So we borrow those ideas. We, we actually have a multiple way to do this by, by performing the ISVD or so on first. Uh, we, we can decouple the matrix, you know, to uh, the, be the uh, product between two small, smaller uh, matrix uh, N by R, R by N. That's basically have uh, the smaller number of the, uh, the eigen, uh, eigen uh, uh, values of to approximate the original matrix 
or we can directly pro, uh, you know, project this or original larger matrix to be uh, to a small model of our, our matrix. So using very typical model reduction tricks. So that that was the, the, the work we published in the ICK 2014, you know, using this a very typical model reduction matrix uh, tricks, you know, to approximate this and map, map them down to the smaller non-raised or crossbar. And so, and we also realize, you know, the neural network can be a sparse. Because at that time, we after you train the neural network, you know, the neural network can be uh, sparse, which means a lot of weights are close to uh, zero. And you can safely remove those uh, close to a uh, zero weight. People actually know this. Um, so even before in 2016, people published in the CPR talk about, you know, the uh, pruning of the neural network, people already know this can be very uh, sparse. In, in other words, we can somehow cluster those non-zero or you know larger than zero weights you know, to smaller region and map them to the crossbar so that we don't need to handle lots of uh, zeros. In and by so in, in other words, so we can more efficiently use you know the memory to cross crossbar by increase the density of uh, this uh, of some lo local locations as we show here. So this is uh, basically talk about uh, the large scale sparse neural network design and also we create the neural clustering uh, method and also implement this. This this paper was in 2000, um, published in 2015. Back, I think that paper was not nominated for the best paper award. But at that time, people don't know that this sparse neural network can be so important. They say, "Oh, it's uh, it's okay." So we didn't get our words. Um, but that was uh, uh, the first for, for first time for me to, to touch the sparse neural, uh, neural network. The, the, in 2016, you know, we received one board from IBM for the true noise. And true noise, you know, this is, uh, you know, the inference the hardware built on the IS1 trying to uh, implement the neural network. And because they have very low precision, they can only represent, you know, the one, zero, and next one on each, uh, uh, each node. You need to find out a way to quantize, you know, the model to this T. Uh, so this is the first time for me to do quantization. And when we received the code, we realized, you know, the IBM used a very, you know, na naive quantization. The ba basically, they got the neural network, the trillion neural network. And based on the weight, they basically say, oh, this one close to zero, this be uh, zero, this one close to one, be, that be one. But we, we feel like this is not be the wise way because if you know you can only represent zero and one on the hardware, why not just a train on your network so that the weights are close to zero and one? So you don't train the neural network in the in the in the normal way. You train the neural network so that you apply the regular light lighters based on the the uh, 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 penalties, so that you get the larger penalty when the weight is closer to uh, zero point five, because zero point five basically gives the largest deviation between the weight and also the one you can quantize. So it's a very simple regulator, just a change one line of the code will dramatically improve the accuracy of the true noise um, rate result. And we show in the right bottom corner. So the, the golden one is our map method and the pink one is original IBM re release. You know, for all the, you know, number of copy of the network and also the number of uh, spikes, that means, you know, the higher input precision our method always outperform the IBM re release. And we only change one, one, one line. So this basically give us the idea that when you are doing the quantization, you need to consider the hardware constraints. I think that's, that is an important concept. And before that, nobody even talked about this. So uh, this is a, the, actually, we finished this one in 2000, early 2015, but IBM paused, uh, you know, uh, paused us for one year because they need to file the, the patents or something first. Uh, we published in 2016. That was also that year best paper no nomination. This is the, maybe the first one I see people use the quantization by considering the ha ha hour. And that's why IBM released again with this patch, but they don't allow us to look at their code anymore. So that's the uh, that's a down. That, that, that that's a, that's a down side of this. Okay, so um, so we we tape out a few chips. You know, I do answer at that time I pit. 
and we're kind of spiking uh, uh, this mount racer based neural network or light level based and so on and so forth. Uh, my medical one, we are still taking out now. And um, so, and one of the latest one published in 2019, where that's important. We uh, vertical integrate, you know, the CMOS with the mount racer device, and then we apply this one on the uh, convolutional neural network and fully connect neural network with a different quantization or different um, uh, defect of to tolerance and technique. I'm not going to go so detail, but there are a lot of reliability uh, tricks you can play with, you know, to make make the things work. Um, so, but this is one we love to show. You can dramatically improve the power efficiency to very high li level. Um, go back to the architectural work. You know, 2015. If you have this amount of racer thing, you know how to calculate. The natural way is you should, you know, make them to be the accelerator in the microprocessor. In 2015, we published one paper in the DAC talk about the Reno. That basically we have a network on chip, you know, to connect all this amount of racer crossbar, and you know, to compute this neural network. And we'll talk about you know, how we can create a compiler you know, to identify the portion of the code and deploy this one on the members of crossbar. And we'll talk about you know, how we can map this to positive and negative ways and also the positive and negative input you know, to this members of crossbar and show this result. So I believe this is one of the worst one, you know, about the members of based accelerator. Later on, you know, 2016, people in the uh, architectural conference about like uh, uh, more de de detail, you know, architectural design regarding the, the RM based accelerator. So this is one year la la later. So in um, 2017, uh, we feel like, you know, they, we should do more than that. So we should uh, make this uh, risk based stuff, you know, more trainable. We basically you can do the on chip training rather than the inference. And also you can pipeline the, the computation because there are a lot of uh, uh, operation can be uh, 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 synchronized. So the pipe layer is a one one paper we published in the HPCA, this semester in Lin Hao, how we're able to map this uh, kernels down to this members of crossbar and we have internal uh, part of them to improve the performance, but by training for the larger hardware uh, cost. I'm not going to details, but if you look at this work today, it's pretty naive. Um, but we feel like, you know, from, from, from then, you know, and, uh, any other emerging device, crossbar stuff, you know, the ba basic problem has been solved. But there are still something we haven't solved, such as uh, um, the scheduling of this works onto the heterogeneous, you know, the accelerator are because we usually handle a lot of uh, accelerator on one trip rather than just one. And the, those those uh, sort of could be uh, could have a different input uh, and also the uh, pro, um, the computing capacities. There must be a way for us, you know, to um, uh, uh, schedule the task across all these accelerators and uh, to minimize the total communication cost and to deal with the part of them such as the data level and also the model level. Those are the two things we, we know. And we also know that a convolutional network, you know, is actually more uh, um, friendly to the data part of them and the fully connected layers are more friendly to the model part of them. So by using this uh, knowledge, we, you know, start to uh, build up the hyper, which is the hybrid part of them, you know, to schedule those things down to the different accelerators. And you can see that, you know, how we can assign the layer to the different, you know, uh, accelerators by de decouple the connection between the different components and achieve the overall performance improvement. And in the 2020, you know, we realized, you know, besides the data and the model part of them, there is a not, not, another part of them in the tensor because when you try to compute the time tensor, in many cases, you need to compute the partial result and then add them together. And that's gave you another dimension of the part of them you need to deal with. So we tried to introduce a finer gradual uh, larity of the tensor partition, which gives the third dimension of the part of them to deal with. So we have the data part of them, model part of them, and the tensor part of them. 
that will contribute to uh, the, the nine different scenarios, you know, survey, 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 right? So you can, you can, you can com com compute. And then you have some hierarchical designs, you know, to break them down to from the very high level partition to the lower line level. And then you have the layer wise partition, basically you can use a dynamic program, uh, programming or any other, you know, the optimization process. You know, to find out the overall parti um, optimal partitioning on this uh, layer. And you can achieve even higher performance compared with the hyper republished into the 19. But all these are uh, static. You know, uh, um, when I presented this work, you know, a couple of months ago in the UC Riverside, and people asked us go if we, uh, we can do more work in the compiler uh, or dynamic uh, schedule and say so yes, you know, um, that's certainly a lot of things that you can do on top of this. Okay, so um, that's pretty much, you know, the Howard design. Later on, we also do something else, but I will say that's um, right, 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 right way more incremental because most of the work had been done, you know, before that. Anything just on top of this can do more thorough work. But the ba basic, you know, direction has been pointed out, you know, in the last uh, seven or eight years. So we, we we start to look at, you know, the efficient AI algorithm design because we feel like, you know, purely working on the hardware will not give you much gains. You have to work on the uh, the algorithm. So first thing we do is a low rank, you know, the model compri compression because we are familiar with the model reduction, right? So. Uh, so one, one, one thing we have done in 2017 ICTV is we actually decouple the deep, deep neural network to the two smaller convolutional lay layers so, and to represent the one big convolutional layers. It's very similar, actually, if you see this as a model reduction, like, you know, the, uh, uh, the scalability solving we have done in the mem race or crossbar. Um, but of course, you have some trips. You have to, um, you know, to train the models and find out, you know, this uh, uh, representative uh, of vectors rather than, you know, you directly do the ISVVD. That would be much simpler. Uh, you need to add some regularization on the training. That's what a typical trick, you know, during the, you know, the neural network training. And in the uh, 2020 I see ML, um, one of my students, you know, you send this one to the memory consumption. The basic idea is very simple. You have some kernels or some first. You try to promise the, uh, 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 approximate the kernels using some uh, linear combination of the ba ba basis. And you can carefully train the model to find the coefficient and to, to store this basis on the memory and also the coefficient to reduce the, the memory usage. So that's what um, one is handy work. Um, pretty much you know, one of the most famous work from our group is basically the structure of uh, sparse neural network. Um, before that, you know, people actually know the neural network is sparse and people actually also say, if we remove the zero, we don't co compute, we can achieve uh, theoretical improvement on performance. When we say theoretically, that means, you know, when we count how many you know, the, 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 the multiplication and addition you're going to use, it certainly will reduce the number. But when you really deploy to the hardware, you will not see the gain because you will generate a lot of the cache miss. So that's actually even slower down this uh, performance. So the, we are from the hardware design perspective. If we know the cache miss rate is high, the best way to do it is we can improve the cache mix. So what we do is we can do the clustering back to the trips we have done many years ago. So we actually do this uh, structural sparsity so that we can just uh, remove the whole row and the whole column of this uh, matrix because we know we're going to store this one into the memory block by block. And if we can do this, we can dramatically improve the, the cash flow quality and improve the performance. So you can do, you can do, we, 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 we apply the group last cell. So basically you partition the neural network weights of the different groups and then you remove them group by group and then you to still maintain the locality. That can be, you know, the filters or channels or the ship or the layers or so on the first. I'm not going to go detail. A lot of people read this paper. It's pretty a standard uh, process for the current, you know, uh, structural uh, uh, for the uh, neural network 
uh, are pruning. Almost all the columns are using this. Uh, so, um, but you can do more than that. You know, and in, you can actually apply uh, different record line lighters, which give you the different properties. You know, to apply this uh, uh, group of lasso. So one paper in the eye clear, you can do the higher uh, square record lighter to just maintain the large you know, width and remove the smaller width intentionally, and you can have some parameter to deal with this. Um, and also you can apply this one not to the CN, but also the STM or, or, or RN. And, and we also work with Intel, you know, to come up with their solution for their first NLP microprocessors. And they actually they use this technique, you know, in their NLP microprocessors. So my, what my uh, student did intern for two years to help them to implement this. Um, so quantization, certainly, you can think about you will apply the different precisions you know on, on the different layers for the quantization it's, it's very simple yes 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 so a few summer intern in my group they actually submitted one paper in ai castle 19 talk about how they can auto automate the search of this uh, uh misc precision quantization they received the better better nomination in this uh, con conference but it's a very simple I, I, ideas However, for all the quantization, you only, only assign a different bit. So it's only two bit, or four bit, or it's a six, you know, six bit. But they must be continuous. For example, we don't say the six bit. It's just six bit. You cannot, you cannot pick the bit saying, I want to have this six bit out of this eight bit. When we say six bit, it must be from zero to five. It's not from zero to eight. So it's a zero, one, four, five, seven. seven. So it's a basically a lot of it's generally a lot of waste because in many cases, there are some bits you're not going to be used. And you will also about uh, different, pre pre different number of the bits. It, they are not necessarily continuous. So the BSQ, the bit level bar velocity is actually created to solve this. It's actually clear 2021 pay, pay, pay paper from my student Juan Juanri. So based on Juanri talked about saying, we can apply the structure pruning idea in this uh, quantization. So basically, we actually use a one column as one group. We can remove the whole columns. So we can, really, so we can intentionally pick the column 0, 1, 3 by bypassing 2 because we know the bit column 2 will not be used in the quantization. And by doing so, we can give a more efficient, you know, the quantization representation of the bit. So the C now you see this is the inter inter uh, structure between the quantization and the structural pruning, and this gave us a, a, a benefit. And we move our levels even higher. We say we can do the distributed lower lower learning. We talk about you know the parameter servers. So we know we can train the models at different nodes. You know, with a subset of this data, and we can send out the gradients to the parameter server and send back. It's a generate a lot of traffic, so we can do the quantization on this uh, gradients, and so that we can improve the performance and reduce the and the re uh, reliance on the um, uh, communication bandwidth between parameter server and also the nodes. So this actually work for the ten gram because we can quantize them to the binary you uh, know values. This actually NIPS 2017. That's actually all oral talk in that year, the first paper in the deep learning uh, uh, section. So and we apply the technique you know on the mobile uh, uh, mobile uh, platform for the training and the ties ties thing. We talk about the quantization or and also you know the topological optimization between the communication between different uh, more mobile phones. And both, you know, the testing and the training, uh, this paper received a better award in the day 2017. You know, I, I know, you know, one one year, um, the Google announced the, the, the training on the mo mobile platform for the, the Tensor Light. Actually, we have done this, you know, uh, even two years before uh, uh, Google uh, uh, announced their solution. So now we try to automate this. A lot of people, I know a lot of people in the office are trying to do NAS, right? So you do the neural architecture search. So uh, you try to automate the whole things. And, and we know the manual designing the neural network will not be this, will not be 
uh, a scalable approach because we can we cannot assume all the engineers know much about you know which one will be more efficient. So we can do autom automatic search, you know, for the uh, different design of the neural network, even topologically or the you know ma ma module, and train the neural network by given you know the application of the day. Um, so. Um, since we are EDA, uh, EDA researchers, so we know more than other people about the topological information, right? Uh, we know how those topological information will affect you know, the output of this uh, result. So we come up with some topological um, search ideas. You know, we can create this uh, topo different topology of the modules. Rather than using, uh, instead of using addition, we use the con uh, con con continuations. So we can maintain the, the topological information to make our search much more efficient. And also, we, 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 we can make, make sure you and we start with a non optimal um, design, but eventually we can gradually approach to the optimal uh, design because we don't lose the information during the search. Uh, this paper was you know, the, our Triple uh, AI 2020 paper, and the 2021 we uh, talk about you know we, how we are able to encode this uh, this uh, different topologies to the represent continuous representation in the in our search uh, uh, space because. At the EDA researcher, we're more familiar with you know the differential op optimization approach, right? So we can try to create the optimization process, and then we can do annealing or whatever you know the, the method to optimize the whole uh, our process. So we can come after we convert the district the topology to the continuous uh, space, then we can. Leverage a lot of tricks we have we have we have, we have learning in the uh, continuous uh, optimization by doing the different uh, the differentiation, and we can we can significantly improve the optimization process. Uh, for example, we can only use like a zero point fifteen GPU days to finish all the optimization uh, instead of using like a few days, you know, or even weeks, you know, to finish all the optimization with similar or equivalent performance. So, um, if you look at the past, look look at what we we, we have done in the last uh, uh, ten years. Uh, we start with the emerging devices. Okay, then we start to build up the memory the crossbar because we realize this actually can be uh, used to efficiently perform you know the uh, uh, neural network operation, especially the matrix vector multiplication. And then we encounter the scalability issue. So we need to have uh, the model reduction or the compression method or spark varsity or pruning method or quantization. Those are the three um, common tricks we play. But actually we learn we learned this. It's not because you know we learn from the machine learning system. It's because those those things are naturally emerge when we consider the higher constraints. So we not naturally came up with, you know, by using our background in the EDA, but not from the machine learning system. Uh, but they can all merge to the nuts the design because uh, we, can, we can use the optimization process. We have uh, a study, you know, for for I feel uh, I, uh, that case, you know, in the EDA society, you know, to 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 unify them. Another side, you know, you can find out, you know, the new rec recognition models, which be more friendly to this uh, memory crossbar, and start to build up, you know, accelerators and scheduling. Uh, so on the first, and then you eventually will merge together to um, finish the, like, so complete the automated algorithm, however, code you So now, if you have built up this uh, foundational research regarding the AI, you no matter be hardware and, and the algorithm, uh, you have the luxury you can do more than that. For example, you can apply those things to the emerging neural network. Uh, uh, structure and you can talk about the security, federal learning, or um, even machine for EDA. So let's look at you know um, this uh, um, this uh, advanced the neural network design. For example, in 2019, early 2019, uh, we analyzed you know the the operation 
of accelerating the uh, GAN, the generative adversarial uh, network, we found out there are a lot of uh, re re replicated function. So we can actually have some uh, training pro process to simplify this uh, design and remove some data dependency, and we can improve the performance by more than 50 times. And also you can come up with some design method, you know, to accelerate this um, uh, reverse the a prune neural network. Basically you try to insert the zeros in this uh, uh, transposed convolu convolutions. Actually, originally we're trying to remove the zero, but not to insert zero. So there be some way you actually can compute this non-zero number first, and then you reconstruct the, the whole uh, transport convolutions. This would be another work in 2019 in the deck. Um, and you talk about, you know, applies one on the transformers, but you'll have another issue because you need to generate some intermediate re result. And those intermediate result actually require to rewrite these things down to the memory of the cross which you don't want because you have uh, some endurance issue, you have uh, some, you know, the large uh, right, right energy issues. So you want to, you want to want to, you know, hide this uh, long writing process, you know, behind some operation. You can, you can reshuffle the operation, blah, 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 to handle this. Um, so uh, and during the analysis, we find out that, you know, when we're trying to classify the class, we actually, uh, you know, each layer to give us a very d d different behaviors. And there are some layers are more cri critical than others. And some features are more critical than others. And based on this observation, you know, my student, you know, Nate, he actually wrote a series of paper talking about the, the black box to try and transfer based on targeted attacks. So the basic idea is you actually can train your attack models without even knowing the, the models and even the, 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 the target application data, but you'll still be able to achieve very high, you know, to try and transfer attack efficiency by um, uh, analyzing the instructed features and also the, the, um, the, the feature maps you know, across the different la layers. I'm not going to go details, but you can read this papers. Um, actually, that was last year, NIPS 2020, which would be the latest one. Um, and we have done you know, distributed learning, just to remember the 10 grant. So we try to, we try to um, minimize the traffic between the uh, parameter servers and also the nodes by using the quantization. And starting from there, you see you know, there's a lot of similarity, but not the same between the distributed the machine learning and the federal learning. So my student trying to extend our knowledge to federal learning. And one example is you have a heterogeneous and uh, uh, federal learning uh, our platform. So you can actually create a neural network and we call the lottery ticket, you know, sub neural network and only transfer the sub network between, you know, global servers and also, also the nodes or we call the uh, clients. And by doing so, you can reduce this uh, traffic, but that's not important. More important is you can handle the personalization under the non-ID data to handle this. And they see, they see the very good uh, re, re result on this. So we start to deal with you know, not only the heterogeneity on the computing device, but also the, the heterogeneity in the, in the data. And I also work with the CDN network and you know, con, 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 con company um, um, trying to impl implement our uh, federal learning uh, uh, framework to uh, for some other applic application in this case you know the style uh, video style transfer so we deploy the whole things on the southern nodes so, you know CDN net network globally so that we can achieve you know the sub 100 mini size size second re result by partitioning the workload between the mobile device and also in the servers on this uh, the edge data center this is one paper probably the more 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 behind. 2020, using our Edge Cloud federal learning scheme. We have all this, uh, um, all this implementation on the CDN network and the Edge data center. The Docker's also are, are there, which you can use. Um, so one major challenge in the federal learning is actually the privacy preserving, right? So um, 
So one paper we published in 2020, KDD, talk about we actually can play the min-max game as the way we usually see in the EDA, you know, the multivariable optimization so that we try to minimize, you know, the, uh, we, we try to hide the, the privacy information, but the max maximize like, retrieving the original information. So we actually build up the two different goals and train our model simultaneously. Um, there are some tricks, you know, how you're able to guarantee, you know, this, this thing. But, but th th this is be uh, it's a um, be um, be the interesting because of we simultaneously train our model for both, you know, opposite, you know, goals. And this paper actually received the by 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 student paper by by student paper award in from KDD for the twenty. Um, but I didn't forget uh, EDA because I, I'm uh, even I'm not uh, you know I expert on the traditional EDA, but I'm still uh, um, I was still tra training with this background. So my student Zhi Yao, he worked with you know our uh, Kolai lab, or, you know Professor Jiang Hu from Tamu. We actually built up a lot of uh, machine learning. Um, based uh, EDA uh, other than to sort the uh, different things regarding the Netherlands eye estimation, our drop reliability, and uh, recently the timing and the power. And uh, our goal is trying to, you know, make everything automatic um, and uh, also trying to protect the privacy you know, during, you know, the training for this da da data. But I know there are a lot of experts in, the, in today's uh, assign, uh, so I'm not going to all the details. So if you look at the whole picture in the last uh, 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 10 years, um, so besides the way we build up the AI foundation, we learned this from hardware and software, we start to um, migrate our interest you know, from this foundation to the application of some of my uh, students regarding you know the more advanced you know, architect architectural support for the for the emerging applications also the distribute distributability training the federal learning and the privacy or EDA you know our, our applications um, so I'm a lucky uh, very lucky I feel like you know to work with this a great library at least some of them so our initial work was uh, um, close to work with uh, you know AR for RL researchers you know and and also uh, Mam Reyes for one with uh, Team One from Tamu at Qatar and also uh, Joshua Young at the USC not USA and uh, EDA with with uh, Jiang Hu and also many others with the Lin Nimir so I can only all of them but I much appreciate their collaboration and many uh, uh, brilliant uh, students there's some of them listed here. Um, but sometimes many, many, many more, and you can see more than half of them already graduated, and uh, some other are still there. Uh, so the things I learned from the whole process: number one, I think that the trainings, mathematical modeling, and logic do help. So the, it's not only EDA, but the many other problem-solving skills. And the EDA research is being reformed by the AI for sure. If you see a lot of update on this, and one one day I'm pretty sure the hype of the AI will fade away in our society, but those problems will be still there in the maybe in the different forms. And it's totally fine, totally okay to change your major as well as your research topics. I will think I change from optical communication to this to this. It takes some time to ramp up for you to learn, and even don't know. What they are, the, what they were at the beginning, gain, uh, gaining, but later on you will learn. You can start with something you feel like you can, can understand and contribute to, and the new ideas will naturally emerge when you are there or research because they are there. It's just to rediscover them, but you're not for search. You're not, they're not being searched, researched and so being searched. So it's important to work with the great colleagues and students. I will say they actually teach you, they will teach you a lot of things thoroughly and efficiently. I feel like I was taught by my students, uh, my collaborators, much more, more than I, I teach. I much appreciate, and you can actually can grow with them together. Um, those are the acknowledgement for some spawn sponsor and and many many more the car companies. Uh, I'm open for any questions you may have. Yes, thank you.
So, uh, dear Iran, thank you very much for a very interesting talk. I see several questions on the Q&A. Uh, do you see them or shall I read to them and then you answer them? So I- I can, I can, I can read them actually, yeah. Okay, so it, it would be good to read them out loud so uh, the okay. others could also hear them. So for, first question is what are the challenges uh, in the training a machine learning algorithm on the RN crossbar, how performance will change whether uh, uh, training is in or in. So the training have a lot of issues because a lot of people believe, you know, training have some tolerance on the variability or so on first, but there are many things, you know, there are many variabilities that actually can be accumulated rather than to tolerated, such as uh, so random noise. So, and also you deal with the defect or endurance, all kinds of things. Um, of the problem programming uh, program ability of the uh, device. So um, you need to handle, I, I think the, uh, currently the research is more about, you know, how you can handle this uh, variability, but how you're able to handle this, you know, this uh, can be solved by the hardware or the, by the software or the algorithm. So regarding performance, we'll change, we'll see in our REN. So I, I will say if everything is perfect, it should not be changed. If we change it because we have some overhead on the performance or the hardware because we need to tolerate you know, such a, a variability or the variations. Um, that really depends on how you implement this. But I will say it's usually be a few percent you know, based on the latest uh, uh, power applications. So how do side time aside to learn about machine learning to be able to, um, to, to pivot for EDA toward deep learning hardware service and, and um, um, the I don't uh, um, I don't exactly know what I mean, but I will say uh, we actually don't learn um, systematically because in many cases you you find some problem and you feel like you know this problem should be solved by something else in maybe D, in a different form. One thing is like a quantization or pruning. Those ideas have been there for many many years, and what we did is we discovered you know, the, the different requirement in the hardware design that we try to implement. So I will say, whenever you need, you just learn those things. But trust me, a lot of things actually have been done be, 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 before, but in very different forms. Uh, also, we will train the performance different between R and PC and ICT run. Uh, it's hard to say because, you know, they have a very different device properties and all different peripheral circuit design. And also depends on how we implement. Some people like to talk about the level base or the stacking base, which I didn't uh, uh, expand in my, in my talk. But usually you have a smaller margin from the device and that would be harder for you to program and harder for you to rate. That take a longer time for you to implement. How do you build up the compiler to map com computational cost in the neural network pro to process in memory, in memory compute? Uh, bingo, it's a very good question, very critical. I believe we there is a missing piece in the processing in memory research with the compilers. I know people trying to do the compilers, you know, trying uh, for the all hours, you know, the GPU or accelerators on the first, and they believe they can magically apply this compiler to the other accelerator, which is not true because, you know, different accelerators have a different mapping scheme. They handle the zero different way, the different data, data, data flow. And you'll need to consider those things in the in the compiler design. And I don't see much work in the compiler for a pin. I believe that'll be that will become hard in the next few years. How do we deal with the pressure from PhD advisor and funding agents when we are running out to deliver results? Well, we need to deliver no matter what. So I, I, I tell my student that you know when you pick up the topic. The first important thing actually is not the interest. The first important thing is uh, you need to find people to fund you interest. And then, then you're trying to see if you can align your interest with the resources. Uh, um, we need to deliver. But on the other side, you need, you need to proactively persuade your PhD advisor and the funding agency that what you're working on will be the important one, I think. So you need to keep, keep doing that. Because in many cases, they actually they are also looking for the good topics. What you have to do is you have to convince them what you're trying to do is a promising one. And actually, this happened again and again in my research group. 
like you know, when Miaohu started doing the mount restart crossbar or when one way try, we're trying to do the sparse neural network, actually they found this uh, topics and we just feel like that's the, a great uh, start point. For the design chips, machine learning will be, for EDA will be more productive for the smaller design, but if the design change, then the concept of the R RTL to GDS with machine learning may fail. What is the view of this? It's a verbal point actually. Um, the, and basically, it's a, uh, we already train some, something and we apply you know, to the D different design. This transferability you know, bother us a lot you know, for not only the machine learning for EDA, but for all the EDA, uh, for, for all the machine lear lear learning things. Um, um, and uh, especially we have some unseen things uh, which we need to deal with. Uh, fortunately, now you will see the increasing interest in the machine learning society to handle those things regarding the transferability, for example, and also you know, to how to handle the unseen data like OD or so on first. Uh, I believe those topics will become, um, will become uh, more popular in the next few years. Yeah. And we should learn something from the foundation of the machine learning and apply this one on the EDA. EDA is not actually, uh, they have a domain knowledge, a lot of domain knowledge, but fundamentally, they share a lot of similarity with our other our applications. Yeah. Uh, just one thing, there was a question from Chris Kim on the chat, so I just read that. So there seems to be a disconnect between AI needs in the industry versus AI research in academia. Any suggestions to close that gap? Um, yeah, Chris, Chris actually gave a very good talk in, in a couple of years ago. In uh, when the pin workshop, I like it. I really like his uh, picture because he gave a picture saying the pin has been talked you know, for many many years, but nobody can deliver this. Um, I, but if we cannot deliver a technology for years, then people start to lose the interest. For example, uh, when we started working on the STTT run back to Seagate in 2007, you know, we, 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 we don't know actually the first IT run uh, commercial product, I mean, even invited, will come out actually 12 years later. We, 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 we thought that we only had three or five years, actually much longer than, than we thought. Similar for PIN or any other technologies. Um, it took a quite a long, long time to we really know if the idea will fail or uh, succeed. But the good part is, you know, um, the AI is still receiving a lot of attention. The AI power is also receiving a lot of attention. We do have a lot of resources we can implement our ideas. And I'm, I'm quite optimistic on the pin technology, not necessarily the MAM Racer or the Spintronic, but maybe ISRAN or any others. But if we can identify you know, some unique application like we have, like we found for the ISTT run, for example, in the watch or something, there is going to be the, the market for this. I think what we should do is we should work closely with the industry people on this and don't expect, you know, we're able to succeed only in about two years. But if we don't do, we, we don't know later on we will, we will uh, succeed. Yeah. Thank you. Is there a 